Flight Crew Support Division conducted a lunar habitation study, which resulted in the construction of a full-scale initial lunar habitat, also known as the construction shack. The initial lunar habitat, or ILH, takes a conceptual look at a completely outfitted habitat, excluding consumables, which is intended to be the first manned phase of a lunar base. The ILH, shown here with radiation shielding, is developed to accommodate a crew of six for 30 to 90 day surface missions. ILH missions include construction, exploration, and science. In addition to the habitat, a logistics carrier, not shown, and an airlock element on the right complete the first manned phase of the lunar base. A habitability evaluation of the ILH was conducted with six test subjects to examine spatial adjacency, user circulation, and user volume. For this evaluation, it is assumed that crews will work in dual shifts due to short surface missions. The crew quarter zone consists of six enclosed individual compartments, a donning doffing area, and a pair of pocket doors. Here is a view of the middle bunk located between the changing area on the left and zone two on the right. As test subjects awaken for a typical lunar day, they shuffle out of their individual compartments and can either check their schedule on a computer, begin breakfast, or use the hygiene and waste management compartments. Notice ingress and egress from crew quarters can be challenging because doors swing up and out, interfering with user circulation and restricting access to the remaining compartments. A solution to this problem is to use timbre or sliding doors, which may reduce injury to the crew and improve unobstructed user circulation. As one test subject dons her flight suit in the changing area located at the module end cone, another person dresses in the waste management compartment. Both areas are completely isolated from the other zones through operable doors. Volume within all crew quarters is approximately the same, one meter wide by one meter tall by two and a third meters long. Crew quarters provide free vertical space to sit up and are outfitted with lighting fixtures, vent controls, and a small stowage compartment for personal belongings and clothing. Crew quarters are large enough to accommodate the donning and doffing of clothes. Zone two consists of the galley, wardroom, healthcare, and exercise areas. This is a public active area located between the crew quarters on the left and the personal hygiene waste management compartments on the right. This image from left to right shows the exercise treadmill area, the wardroom which contains table and chairs that are stowed beneath the floor, a large screen video monitor, stowage compartments, and the pocket door to zone one. This image from left to right is the pocket door to zone one, one healthcare rack, two galley racks, and the waste management facility in Zone 3. The galley racks contain ovens, food preparation areas, refrigerators, stowage, and a hand washer. This image shows the exercise, wardroom, and galley areas in the foreground and the crew quarters and dressing area with pocket door closed in the background. Here test subjects are preparing a meal in the galley as the wardroom table is being set. The test subjects recommended an increase in counter space and user volume if the food system is not prepackaged for individual meals. For small meals, the wardroom table is adequate and does not interfere with user circulation. Utilizing chairs that are portable allow crew members to reposition their seats into the aisleway for maximum viewing of the wardroom screen. For collective meals involving all six crew members, user circulation is restricted due to an extended table. The table is considered too small for meals where individual food items are served separately. For medical operations, it is awkward to examine patients in a public aisleway and control medical procedures. The test subjects consider the health care facility too small for medical monitoring. The adjacency between wardroom and exercise area is questioned. The exercise sessions prove to be distracting and disturbing for people at the wardroom table. It is undesirable to exercise while a meal is being prepared in the galley or while eating is occurring in the wardroom area. During a medical emergency, an injured crew member is transferred through the habitat to the healthcare area. 
A middle bunk is used as a patient examination table. In a situation such as this, the private sleeping unit is turned into a public examination area. Test subjects suggest a separate dedicated examination area within a combined healthcare and exercise activity zone located on either side of the crew quarters. In Zone 3, the personal hygiene and waste management area consists of two separate enclosed compartments. Participants suggest relocating this zone between the crew quarters and the galley wardroom area. The waste management compartment located between the galley on the left and the stowage area consists of a sink, mirror, water closet, and stowage compartment. Participants feel both compartments are adequate for accommodating one individual at a time. The hygiene compartment consists of a shower unit with deployable seat, a mirror, and stowage compartment for dry clothes. Zone 4, the stowage area, is located between the hygiene and waste management compartments to the left and operations zone on the right. The stowage zone consists of four half-width racks on each side of the aisleway. Each rack consists of individual trays containing refrigerated foods, ambient temperature foods, and other consumables. During the evaluation, two stowage racks are removed to demonstrate a changeout of consumables. For routine resupply, each rack should be changed out separately in order to reduce obstruction of user circulation. The use of handrails and wheels is recommended for ease of handling the racks. The operations zone is located between the stowage area to the left and the airlock. The operations zone consists of two telerobotic workstations, a maintenance workbench, and two instrument modular units. This image shows from left to right zone 4, two instrument modular units, two telerobotic workstations, workstation chairs, and stowage compartment. The operations zone can accommodate up to four subjects working simultaneously on separate activities. The stowage zone acts as an isolation buffer between operations and galley wardroom activities. Activities from the galley wardroom are observed but do not interfere with Zone 5 personnel. Some participants feel the workstations are too close and may be a distraction for crew members working side by side. Others feel this zone will require intensive concentration where further isolation from other zones through the addition of sliding pocket doors is necessary. This evaluation concludes the subjective analysis of a conceptual initial lunar habitat. The test subjects evaluated the activity zones of the habitat for six continuous hours. This evaluation concentrated on crew off-hour activities, such as meals, entertainment, relaxation, and housekeeping. All of the test subjects' recommendations dealt with design layout and spatial adjacency of the habitat. The overall rating on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being excellent, the ILH rated a 7 for habitability, which is considered satisfactory. Lessons learned from this evaluation will be applied to partial gravity habitat projects in the future.